Hey learners, welcome to Ahmed Coaching and I'm your teacher Dr. Anand. Today we are going to study about homeostatic function of liver. Hepat is the word which is the root word for the liver. So whenever you are going to hear about hepatic word, it means it is referring to liver. So if you are looking for the scientific word for the liver, it's going to be hepatic. Anything related to hepatic, hepatic vein, hepatic artery, it means that it is related to liver. Liver is a vital organ in human body. It is located in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen just below the diaphragm. Here you can see this is the structure of human body in which it is divided into four quadrants like this. So liver is present in the right upper quadrant here just below the diaphragm which is this it is the largest internal organ and the central station of metabolism maximum amount of chemical reactions or metabolism takes place in the liver that is why it is also called as metabolic clearing house that any byproduct which is formed during the process of metabolism it is processed in the liver and removed from the body it performs numerous essential functions critical to maintaining the homeostasis and overall health. Main homeostatic functions of liver include synthesis, storage, conversion, recycling and detoxification. Let's study all these functions one by one. Starting with the synthesis, the first important function of liver is synthesis of plasma proteins. Plasma is a part of blood and plasma proteins they are present in the plasma. Here you can see this is the blood. This blood indicates the plasma. The plasma it contains plasma proteins. The first plasma protein includes albumin. It is the most abundant plasma protein and the function of albumin is to maintain the osmotic balance of the blood osmotic balance mean that how much water should be present in the blood is controlled by the concentration of albumin if the water is high the albumin concentration is maintained somehow so that the water balance is maintained the second plasma protein includes clotting factor clotting factors such as fibrinogens prothrombin these are the names of the clotting factors they are essential for preventing excessive bleeding and ensuring proper wound healing so whenever you have a cut anywhere on your body these clotting factors fibrinogen and prothrombin they move to the injury site and they are going to make a clot over there clot means that they are going to seal that cut so that loss of blood is prevented and liver is involved in the synthesis of these clotting factors. The third type of plasma protein includes transport proteins. Liver also synthesizes various transport proteins aiding in the distribution and availability of essential minerals and vitamins. As the name indicates that they are going to transport something. Transport means they are going to take something from one place to another place. That is why they are called transport proteins and these transport proteins they are synthesized by the liver so that they can take minerals and vitamins from one place to other place where they are required. Second synthesis function of liver includes synthesis of bile. Liver produces bile acids and salts from the cholesterol. Bile is stored in the gallbladder and then released into the small intestine to aid in the digestion and absorption of dietary fat and fat soluble vitamins in the digestive system you must have learned about bile which is present in here the gallbladder the function of this bile is in the emulsification of fats itself bile is not involved in the digestion but what is going to do that it is released into the small intestine where it is going to act on the fat going to emulsify it or convert it into small droplets so the enzymes they can act on it and digest the fat so this bile is originally synthesized in the liver and the synthesis is done by the help of cholesterol it means that cholesterol is converted into bile and then bile moves from the liver to the gallbladder 
it is stored here and whenever needed by the small intestine to digest the fats it is released from the gallbladder enters into the intestine act on the fats so that it's emulsified or converted into small droplets so that enzymes they can act on them and digest them along with the fats they are also helpful in the fat soluble vitamins which are a d e and k the third synthesis function of liver includes lipid metabolism in the lipid metabolism the first thing is cholesterol synthesis the liver synthesizes cholesterol which is essential for the formation of cell membranes steroid hormones as well as bile acids as we just studied so all these things cell membranes steroid and bile acids they require cholesterol and that cholesterol is synthesized in the liver then comes the lipoprotein production lipoprotein means lipid and protein combined together the liver produces lipoproteins which are very low density lipoproteins low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins that transport lipids which are triglycerides and cholesterols these are the names of the lipids triglycerides and cholesterol through the blood stream so in the form of lipoproteins these triglycerides and cholesterols they are transported from the blood stream to the part of the cells where they are required proper lipid transport is crucial for energy distribution and storage so this is how liver is involved in lipid metabolism then comes the fourth part of liver synthesis which includes nitrogenous waste nitrogenous waste mean that compounds which contains nitrogen the liver deaminates amino acids deaminates mean that they are going to remove the amino group here we can see this is the structure of amino acid in the amino acid with the carbon center carboxyl group and amino group they both are attached in the process of deamination this amino group is removed from the amino acid and is converted into ammonia this ammonia is then entered into the urea cycle here you can see this which is then excreted by the kidney in the urea cycle urea is formed and this urea is excreted out of the body by the help of kidney this detoxifies ammonia a toxic byproducts of protein metabolism so if you are taking excessive protein which is more than the requirement of your body what the body is going to do that it's going to send that excessive amino acids to the liver in the liver the amino group from the amino acids is removed and is converted into ammonia this ammonia then enters into the urea cycle and through several steps this ammonia which is the most toxic byproduct is converted into urea and this urea which is a less toxic product is removed out of the body by the help of kidney